feeling so small Watch the clock ticking off the wall But tonight I'm letting it go Spend Hello and welcome to my channel. Welcome back to Positive Vibes. Here on Positive Vibes, I basically talk about life. I talk about everything that consisted of our overall well-being, lifestyle, uh, you know, anything that has to do with life and living. Um, I give a lot of different motivation and um, different ideas as to how you can live a purposeful, prosperous life in Christ. So if, you, if it's your first time joining me here, welcome please hit the subscribe button down below and hit the bell so that you will be notified I will be putting up a positive vibe video every single week on Fridays and just make sure that you stay tuned because you don't want to miss the goods <laughs> so let's get into the video so today I want to talk to you guys about raising children yes raising children guys I am a mom of three I have Three wonderful children and their ages are 9 12 and 13 and I feel like I am literally ah, my mind is blown every single day so because their ages are so different uh, my husband and I we we experience um, different things most of you do know my daughter who is 13 she's our oldest she does have uh, Down syndrome and so that poses a lot of challenges and if you are a family that does have an individual that has special needs you already know the challenges that that brings between um, just everyday life and the challenges between your marriage and just you know just challenges of that individual just just being a normal quote-unquote person um, doing everything that is considered whatever is considered normal and um, you know the just the challenges that that brings so I'm going to go through individually all three of my children um, and kind of just pinpoint the different personalities and the different characteristics and traits and everything like that um, that our children poses and also the benefits that um, well not really the benefits but how it affects us as a family and as parents so with our oldest that have Down syndrome she is being potty trained she's, she's still in diapers um, she is 13 years old but developmentally she's about you know I would say across the board her development is about two to maybe four years old um, there are certain things that she can do on her own like feeding she can eat on her own um, she can undress on her own she gets into the tub on her own she can walk by herself she doesn't need any assistance with that and she does have some language she still have language barriers but she is um, you know she is having a lot of sentences and just having new conversations and just words that we've never heard before is like literally coming out um, and so with that comes a lot of different growth and different development obviously she's 13 years old so her body is changing inside and out ladies you know what I'm talking about so we're dealing with a lot of those changes on a monthly basis and also on a daily basis so she still requires a lot of our assistance um, don't mind the cars I told you I'm outside um, but she still does require a lot of our assistance to do just a lot of the daily things you know things that we take for granted um, she needs assistance with like bathing and diap you know well not diapering but going to the bathroom she needs assistance with that um, you know getting dressed getting her hair done you know turning on her television sh her television show and cooking eating she will choose a lot of the times the things that she does want and does not want but if, if it's not prepared for her she won't be able to do it because we still have to prepare all of her meals for her um, 
you know, she still drinks out of a sippy cup somewhat. She drinks out of a cup with a straw as well. So the challenges that we face with our oldest child is not the same challenges that we face with our other two children. Nyla still needs help with making her bed, cleaning her room, um, you know, putting her clothes away. She does help with laundry in terms of taking the clothes out the baskets and putting them back in, um, which is more of a one to two year old development. She is still needing help with getting into the car, getting out of the car, buckling her seatbelt, unbuckling seatbelt. So a lot of the things um, that our other two children are able to do for themselves, she's not yet there. So she still requires a lot of our um, assistance, a lot of our help to do a lot of these things. And sometimes it is challenging because she is 13 years old and so she's developmentally her body is 13 years old and her mind is not so she thinks that she's still a baby slash toddler so there's a lot of things that um you kind of give her a pass on because she doesn't yet understand like you telling her nyla wash your dishes she's looking at you like okay what am i supposed to do with that so what we do is hand over hand we we will help her to put the dishes in the dishwasher. She takes her dishes to the sink, but we will help her to put the dishes into the dishwasher or, you know, just help her to say, okay, Nyla, it's time to take a bath or, okay, Nyla, it's time to go to bed or, okay, Nyla, it's time to get dressed for school. And so what she does at home, she also does at school. She gets the assistance there. And so that's kind of how we balance each other out. So those are the everyday challenges that we face with Nyla. With our other two children, Michael and Michaela, Mikey is 12 years old and Michaela is 9 years old. And so the challenges that we're facing with them is more of clean your room, keep your room clean, or <laughs> get your chores done on time, you know, or time to shut down the, the, the television or shut down your iPad or your computer, get your homework done. You know, just the everyday, make sure when you go to school, you follow the rules, you do these, you do these things. So it's it's different, it's different, there are differences between the three children, but their personalities um, is also different. Because Nyla is more playful and, um, I want to say more playful and laid back. She will at times go to her room and you won't hear a peep out of her she likes her space then other times she is literally all over the house and the pillows are all over the house and her cup is all over the house and just other different just different things um, that we kind of have to run behind her with um, my daughter Michaela sort of is like that in a way she is messy but not to a T she will take um, she will make a hot cup of chocolate and she'll drink the hot cup of chocolate and leave the cup on the coffee table <laughs> or um, she will eat her candy and leave the candy wrapper on the counter you know Mikey is he'll take his potato chips or whatever snack he's snacking on up to his room and you won't see it in the garbage because it's under his bed or <laughs> you know it's on his dresser um, so those are the type of differences that we're dealing with with our children. Um, they're very good kids. We are truly blessed and we have no complaints. Um, they are really great kids. They are amazing in school. They, you know, they, they are obedient children and I'm just, I'm grateful. It's just certain things as a parent you go through with your children and just the little things you're kind of like, okay, you... You should know better not to do that, or you should know better to put that away. Or if I ask you to put your laundry away, it's there's no reason why a week later your laundry should still be in the same spot where I left it. You know, so I just want to encourage you as parents that if you are going through these ages and these same type of things where your kids are not cleaning up after themselves as they supposed to you know they are they do their homework but they just leave it on the table or you tell them to do something and it just does not get done you know you kind of have to be a helicopter parent 
you know, get your chores done, wash the dishes, mop the floors, sweep the floors, throw the garbage out. If you are going through these type of things, do not be alarmed. It's completely normal. It's completely natural. Um, you're going to go through it. Every age is different. And with every child, every child is different. So they're going to pose different challenges. But I just want to just come on here and just tell you, it's okay. Breathe. Don't let any of these things bog you down, get you down. I know sometimes you may ask, can you help me do this? Can you help me do that? Because then you feel like you're the only one that's kind of doing everything in the house. But I just want to let you know that you are not alone. Parents go through it all the time, every single day, all day long. You are absolutely not alone. So for us, whenever we feel overwhelmed as parents, what we do is we take it to God because ultimately he is our Heavenly Father and he's the only one that understands what we're going through on the inside. Um, and so we take it to God in prayer and we pray for our kids and we pray for their understanding and, you know, we pray for wisdom for them and we ask God to guide us and to lead us and to help us as parents to raise them in the way that he desired for, that, for them to be um, raised. And so with that... It allows us to kind of take the pressure off of ourselves and put it on God in terms of taking up his yoke and taking up his burden because it's easy and it's light and giving it to him. And just knowing that one day they will grow up and they will get older and these things that we are teaching them, you know, it will click. One day it will click that, oh my goodness, now that I'm on my own, I remember when mom and dad used to say, clean up after yourself, put the dishes in the sink, start the dishwasher, unload the dishwasher, put my dirty laundry in the wash basket, <laughs> clean up after, you know, unpack my clothes, hang my clothes up. I remember those days when mom and dad used to say those things. So now it's clicking. I'm telling you moms, I'm telling you dads, they will get it. All you have to do is take it to God in prayer and continue to beat it inside their head. Continue to pour it in, into them. Don't give up. Don't give up hope. Don't get discouraged. And don't feel like you are alone because you are not. Sometimes I call my mom and I'm just like, oh my gosh, how did you do it with four kids by yourself? Because I was raised in a single parent household and so was my, my husband. He was raised in a single parent household. And so... I didn't have my dad there until I was nine, um, and my husband never had his father there. And so these are different challenges and different things that we're like, oh my gosh, what is going on? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> you know, so we are learning at the same time as teaching our children, but we know that we cannot do it without God. Like, I don't even know how anybody tries to do anything without without God but walking this life without him for me is absolutely ludicrous it's 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 crazy for me personally i need him in my life i need the lord jesus in my life i need to be able to go to him and cry and say lord i am tired today or i just need a break or i just need to scream or you know, Lord, I'm having a really good day. My kids are listening. My husband is, you know, is 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 doing good. And just, I, I need to have that relationship with him where I can go to him um, in prayer or just even sitting down having a conversation like this. Because I talk to him all the time. Literally, I'm standing at the sink doing dishes or sweeping or cleaning the bathrooms and I'm talking to him and he hears me and so I just want to encourage you that if you do have a relationship with Christ go to him go to him and 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 talk to him because he listens and he hears you and he wants you to talk to him if you don't have a relationship with Christ I do want to invite you to develop that relationship with him because walking this life alone is not easy Walking with Christ sometimes is not easy because there are things that you're going to learn. But to know that he is there with you step by step every moment of the way, it gives you a confidence and it gives you a peace to know that God is with you always. And so I just want to invite you to know Christ if you don't know him so that you can 
you know, you can have a relationship with him and it can become easier because it does. It really does. Being a mom, I have learned so much over these past 14 years. I have learned so much how to be patient, how to not get stressed out, how to, you know, to, to, to fight certain battles and certain battles to let go, how to just just be, you know, and not allow the issues of this world or the issues of my children to overwhelm me because it can and it will if you allow it to. So I just want to encourage you this morning, take the time out to breathe, take the time out to um, to just just realize that you're not in this fight, you're not in this walk alone. What we do is we have uh, family Bible studies every week and we sit down around the table or the living room and we talk about the issues that we go through, that we face on an everyday basis. Our children, we give them the, the opportunity to, to come out and talk to us about anything. We have an open door policy with our children. There is nothing that we hide from them. Um, we are very transparent with them and we tell them all the time, if there is anything, I don't care how small, I don't care how stupid you may think it is, come to us and talk to us about any and everything that you're facing because we want them to be able to know that this, our home, is a safe zone. We don't want your friends to tell you things. We don't want them to teach you about this or teach you about that. We want you to hear it from us first so that you will know how to handle and carry yourself when you get out of, when you leave our home and get out into the real world. And so we find that our regular everyday, um, every week Bible study helps because there are instructions. The Bible have instructions, instructions, I'm sorry, as to how to raise your children. And so we follow the Bible. We follow the biblical instructions that God has given us as to how to raise our children. Proverbs talks a lot about it. Proverbs 6 talks a lot about parents, um, children being obedient to your parents, you know, because you'll have long life and that it will go well with you. But it also says parents, do not provoke your children to anger. You know, so there is just a lot of instructions and and um, guidelines, blueprints um, in the Bible that helps you as a family to to um, to go through this life, to maneuver through this life as individuals, as a family, as a couple, as a, a married couple. You know, there's a lot of things. It can strain your marriage, but you got to be cautious of that and you have to be protective of your family and of your marriage because the enemy will try to come in and he will try to destroy what the foundation that you have that you are building so i just want to encourage you moms and dads don't be discouraged don't don't be discouraged when you feel like you want to pull your hair out it's okay grab a pillow and scream in the pillow you know it's okay it's normal it's natural to feel these things it will come trouble will come you know uh uh you will feel certain things and feel angry and feel upset and feel all these things, but don't let it take you over to where it takes you into a sinful nature. Because once you get to the flesh or the sinful nature, you cannot come back from that. So once you, when you start to feel upset or overwhelmed when your children are not listening to you or, you know, when whatever happens, take a step back and breathe. Maybe just be like, listen, I need, I need some time, I need a break, and this is what we teach our children. If you feel angry, if you feel overwhelmed, it's a normal feeling. It's okay to feel that way. But when you feel that way, take a step back and breathe. Just think about it, think about what got you to that point, and think about how can you better, you know, um, have self-restraint or how you can have self-control. And how can we as mom and dad help you to get to where you need to be? So I just want to tell you guys, just be encouraged guys. It's going to get better as you raise your children. Um, you're raising productive, great human beings. And with that is going to come a lot of challenges because you are fighting against principalities. You're fighting against different things. You're fighting against video games. You're fighting against friends. You're fighting against negative influences. You're fighting against the image that is out in the world as to what your children should be. You're fighting against that 
as a Christian family. You're fighting against a whole lot of things. And so I just want to encourage you to just breathe. I want to encourage you to take it to, take it to God in prayer. I want to encourage you to talk about it. Have a dialogue. Open up. Be transparent with your children. Listen to your children. And also, don't forget, you've been there. You were a troubled child. You gave your parents problems. You didn't listen. You snuck out. You did these things. So remember the things that you did and put yourself in their shoes where they are now. A, it goes around. It's, it's, it's a cycle. It happens. But we want to break that cycle with Christ. We want to break that cycle today. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you guys have gained some inspiration, some knowledge, some wisdom from this video. And if you like positive vibes, give this video a thumbs up. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, I would love for you to do so. And hit that bell for new notifications whenever I do upload a video. Thank you guys so much for watching and be positive in your vibes. Bye guys.